Good afternoon, good evening, I guess, Southeast Idaho. Thank you so much for taking time to tune in. I've got Dr. McRoberts here. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, we just want to take a little bit of time, uh, talk a little bit about the 100 deadliest days. Uh, we come to you live from Portneuf Medical Center from the hangar where our helicopter normally is. But uh, I know that our helicopter was busy over this weekend. Yep. Um, do you want to explain a little bit, Dr. McRoberts, what are the 100 deadly days? So the 100 deadliest days are the days between Memorial Day and Labor Day. It's roughly 100 days. And that is the t period of time when many more people are out uh, uh, vacationing, traveling, and it turns out that when we look at trauma accidents, they happen at a much higher rate during that period of time. We call it trauma season. And we always take time at this time of year to try to remind the public to act in a safe and responsible manner when they're out having fun, and we wanted to talk about some of that today. Yeah, and just this weekend, um, Idaho State Journal published an article that uh, just in Idaho, seven fatalities just over Memorial Day. Yes, and uh, actually when we were scheduling this Facebook Live event, we tried to do it the weekend or the week before Memorial Day to talk about this. And then when we scheduled it for now, I said, well, that's fine. We'll go ahead and talk about how deadly this past weekend was, which it was. There were uh, seven fatalities, one in Bannock County right around here, um, but seven uh, statewide last year over the 100 deadliest days, 88 people lost their lives in motor vehicle crashes during the 100 deadliest days. And as you know, the pandemic weans and people are gonna be out traveling much more, we anticipate that that number is only going to go up. Yeah. That's almost one a day. I mean, 88 over the yep. 100 deadly days, that's a Absolutely. statistic. For sure. So, well, you know, our point isn't to scare people and say, stay home. So no. how can they still enjoy their summer but do it safely? Sure. I, I think one of, the, one of the biggest things is definitely driving. People are traveling a lot more. We know, for example, that uh, Teton and Yellowstone National Park are two of the major tourist destinations coming up for this summer. Um, there were traffic jams of three hours long in Yellowstone National Park just this weekend. And so we know that people are going to be out on the roads. And we know that the best way to prevent um, motor vehicle crashes from occurring is to drive safely. So we kind of have what we call the five D's of driving that we try to avoid. And those are um, drunk, drugged, distracted, drowsy, and of course the fifth one, damn kids. And what we mean by that is kids in the car distracting other kids in the car, which the, the children have a 26% increased risk of motor vehicle crashes during summer months. They're out partying with their friends and stuff. And so we wanna definitely try to avoid all of those things. Yeah. And here, here at Portneuf Medical Center, um, you know, it's a level two trauma center. What does that mean for people out traveling, whether they're from Pocatello or traveling through Pocatello? Well, I think uh, the, the, the one thing to know is that the state has a statewide trauma system, and we are one of the key players in that. We are a verified trauma center. That means the American College of Surgeons comes in here every three years, and they'll be here this fall, to verify all of the care that we provide, that we have all of the resources available 24-7, that we have our life flight crew here available again 24-7, and that we really have a system in place. You know, I like to tell people, um, you know, trauma surgery and taking care of trauma patients is a team sport. You have to have all sorts of radiology, laboratory, ICU, operating room. You have to have everybody involved to be able to play the game. And so it's our job to make sure that we put the team together to be able to provide that care at all times. Okay, great. And then um, we kind of talked about these with the five D's, um, you know, as far as traveling. What, what would you say about, you know, ATV accidents, motorcycle, bicycle, um, you know, kind of that backwoods sporting type stuff? Well, I, I've um, recently become accustomed to just telling people every time I see them, I'm like, wear your seatbelt, leave your phone alone, wear your helmet, you know, practice general good safety. Um, we were looking at some of the points before uh, this event and we noted that 
motorcyclists are 79% less likely to get in a motorcycle crash if they take a motorcycle safety course. And so it's just practicing good, safe, common sense things. Sure, um, that's a great question. Um, I think what's even more common than, than Tesla's are a lot of the newer cars now have um, smart cruise control and that slows down and speeds up. And the problem, I, I don't know that we have any data on that, but the problem with it is it leaves you a much bigger opportunity to be distracted and not pay attention. Because you know, if you have your smart cruise set on whatever, 80, and you come upon somebody, you automatically slow down. So people tend to not pay as much attention. So um, my own anecdotal data on that is it probably does lead to um, increased distraction because you're not paying attention to driving as much. Between car and ATV, it's definitely car accidents for sure. No question about that. Um, the most common injury actually that we see is a fall. The, that's the most frequent way people get injured is falling down. And so uh, again, that goes with being fit for fall. You want to make sure that you're, you're aware of your surroundings and stuff like that. So, so about seven years ago, uh, we chose to increase our designation from level three to level two um, because we actually, A, had the volume of trauma to do so. We last year had over 800 trauma patients uh, seen at our facility. And B, we had all the services that are required to provide that care, which really focuses around trauma surgery, which are the general surgeons like myself, the neurosurgeons who take care of like head injuries, traumatic brain injuries, and then the orthopedic surgeons which take care of fractured bones. Those are by far the three most common, but then you also have to have other specialty services available like facial surgery, reconstructive surgery, vascular surgery, things like that. We had all of those in place, and really the right thing to do is if you're providing the highest level of care, you get an independent outside agency like the American College of Surgeons to come in and verify that you're providing that excellent care. So it's really for the community, for sure. Well, I think the, the main one is that it's 24 seven ability to take care of any trauma that comes in. There's very few traumatic injuries that we don't have the ability to take care of. Um, one of them is burns, and that's because there's a few isolated burn centers around the country. But in general, we take care of everything that comes in here. So we look at our, what we call a transfer in to transfer out ratio, and we transfer in far more people than we have to transfer out um, because of inability to care for them. Yeah. And just because we have the ability to yes. take care of those patients. For sure.